It's a great pleasure for me to welcome you to our today's lecture by uh, Dr. Kawe Kruger, because he is joining us from Brazil, which is really far away and has a really different time right now and even a different um, time in the year because it's summer when here is winter. And yeah, I'm super happy that uh, we can today hear your talk, Kawe, um, from our partner university in Curitiba, Brazil, Catholic University of Para Para uh, Paraná. Is it right? Yes, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> And um, Kawe Kruger is adjunct professor there at this uh, university, and he holds a doctoral and master degrees in anthropology and a bachelor degrees both in social science and theater arts. And this make it super interesting for us because he'll bring in these disciplines that I think are um, major in contemporary discourses on uh, contemporary art, not only performing art, but also I think about uh, anthropology and social science, and of course also this uh, aspect of performance and performative arts. So you bring together all the things that are really uh, trendy right now, and I'm really looking for you yeah, to your lecture today under the title, The Anthropologist is Curator, Some Remarks on Brazilian Experiences. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Ilarion. Uh, it's it's a, a, a enormous honor to, to be here in this fantastic event. Uh, it's curating the host Globo today, right? So, um, I'm very, very happy to this and uh, to, to being here. And uh, uh, I would like to thank every single one of you for sharing this same time connection. Uh, I hope that all these efforts, my efforts could compensate the spending of your time, uh, your megabytes, your electricity, your battery in some cases. Uh, well, thinking now might be even a lot to, to spend of time, electricity and megabytes, but anyway, let us, let us try. So in this lecture, I have chosen to speak about the anthropologist as a curator. It's not a, a, a mine idea. This is, we, we did have already uh, a book uh, authored by Roger Sanzi, an anthropologist of, of, of Barcelona University uh, on, on that integrating this big discussion all around Europe. But I think I could uh, bring something no, a little bit novel from Brazilian data. So uh, I might say something about anthropology at first, and then I might add some commentaries on anthropology of art, the traffic among arts and anthropology, and also something about this, this relations on anthropologies with curator. And finally, bring some specific data, basically data collected uh, and reflected by uh, Aristoteles Barcelo Neto. So I'm not also the, the, the one at the field. Uh, I'm just a super fan of all these discussions as well. So maybe uh, I, I could join everything to get put everything together in a new light and maybe uh, help to, to, to increase all this discussion. Well, Hans Oberst, that I'm, I'm, I'm for sure every single one of you know, recurrently recall the etymology of curating, right? We know it comes from the Latin word curare, meaning to take care. So we, he says that in Roman times, it meant to take care of bathhouses. Medieval times uh, designated the priest who cared for souls, right? Later in the 18th century, it meant looking after collections of art and artifacts. And today, curating as a profession means a lot of things. It means to preserve, to, to, in the sense of safeguarding the heritage of art, and also uh, to be the selector of this new work. It means to connect to art history. It means to display, arrange the world, and also means to give sense of specific things because as the art world expands, for sure, curatorship also expands and goes beyond museums and art markets, right? 
Uh, but I would like to stick with this idea of curing, the, the, to cure. And this brings us with this exciting proximity with the APA Thai entities that uh, uh, are represented in, in the photography that uh, Aristoteles Barcelo Neto already chose, sh shown us, right? So these are entities conceived by Wauja Indians from Xingu, central Brazil. Uh, let me uh, probably share this link of, of an interesting, uh, let me share first of all, the link for, for all this information on this group. That is this one. We have this fantastic database created by Institute Socioambiental. So just shared in on the on the chat here, uh, and I intend to uh, to share it on screen a little bit right now. Okay, so uh, these indigenous groups are five hundred and forty people in the last census. Uh, they are in Mato Grosso, uh, in the area of Brazil. I'll, I'll shortly present a map. And here you can see a lot of basic uh, notions on, on these ethnic groups. Uh, so we do have in Portuguese and in, in, in English, they are very important keramists and they do have a giant ritual and symbolic complex that might be quite interesting, I hope. So if you'd like to explore that later, it's already there. Um, oops, oops, oops. Yes. So uh, I'll, I'll stick with some, some ideas from Pedro Cesarino, Ilana Goldstein, Aristoteles Barcelo Neto, which is the main source. Uh, and also here is the, is the link of of this, this information. So here is Brazil in the upper left side of, of your screen. And there's a very little pink area in the central Brazil area of there in Mato Grosso that is, uh, that is reproduced in detail here. So every single single triangle is, uh, is a village. <clears throat> and, uh, Sorry, Kawe, we don't see right now what you are describing. We are half no? No, we have here, uh, it was still, it was a PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm, I'm probably sharing the it, other, yeah, another yeah. screen there. Double then. screen problem, yeah, right. Let me, let me check it out. Take, take your time. Now, what can you see? Can you see the map? We see the map but you are still not in the presentation modus. You are still... Uh, no. no, it it's okay. Nope. No yet. Sorry. No, no problem. Let me find which screen. Uh, this shared screen. Maybe. So it, it, wa it was the right screen, but it was, and uh, now it's perfect. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. There you go. I, I, I took some time to, to, to find the, the correct one. Sorry about that. Uh, but anyway, uh, so here is the map, Brazilian map, and the pink area is the broader picture with a with lot of uh, indigenous villages. And uh, Aristoteles Barcelo Neto were researching uh, in this, this place here around uh, Piulaga Lake. Uh, so there are registers of an ancient presence of them. Uh, and, and they have big connections with other indigenous people because this is, this, all this form, uh, uh, this complex of Xingu uh, Park that is very important for Brazilian uh, ethnology. Uh, okay, anyway, so, um, so this idea of curing, right? Yeah, I would like to return for, from that, apartheid entities are conceived by Wauja Indians from Xingu, 
central Brazil as a sort of animals and spirits that cause all this kind of illness. So those objects that are that are displayed over there, especially the objects of of, of those masks that are big and, and enough, but are not the, that central to, 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 to ritual complex. The major figure are the flutes and the clarinets. But anyway, they, they represent uh, and they are used in mid, mid life ritual. So it's something that happened between initiation uh, uh, rituals and mortuary cult. So they are these uh, rituals of, of, of health actually. So it's absolutely interesting because all this cosmological universe interweave realms that we moderns in Bruno Latour's term would div divide or specify, putting aside arenas such as artistic, uh, and handicrafts, religious and medical. So all this for Wauja people is held in a single practice. Uh, I shall speak a little. Oops. Yeah. So Não, <laughs> Quando você está doente, sua família, seu pai, é, seu irmão, qualquer da sua casa que leva a comida quando você estava doente no meio, aí vai dar comida amigalzinho, né? Para adoecer, tem que ter alguma coisa para adoecer. É a papatai que a gente sempre fala. A papatai pode causar, causar, causar alguma coisa, alguma coisa para ele ficar doente. Ficar doente é fora do gripe, fora da, da é, doença da cidade. Né? Aí esse, esse, essa doença só pode ser curada pelo os pajés, né? Os pajés é ver no sonho, né? Quando eles fumam. Quando você fuma, 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 fuma até desmaiar do fumo, né? Aí você é o espírito que tem nos pajés e pode abrir seus olhos no, no outro mundo também, né? Deles, dos pajés. E para salvar a vida da gente, né? Aí enxerga qualquer pessoa, diferente da, da nossa. 
entre nós já temos outras pessoas, né? Que é a papata aí. É o, o, o pajé, só pode ver esse daí. Could you please vez. move the mouse so we can thank you? Como agora meu pai está aqui na frente, no meio da gente, ele não chega. Pode enxergar no sonho e não quando ele fumar forte, nem que ontem meu primo estava correndo, né? Então, ele estava vendo esse espírito fora da gente. Lord, we, we are the most damaging government of our history, no matter if we choose social, environmental, gender, educational, or artistic levels. Indigenous groups, descendant of LGBTQ communities, artists, scientists, and professors are especially under pressure over now, uh, being disrespected as a vote by the current government. So I hope we could also be cured from all those evils. And I believe that in keeping with our activities, researches, teachings, conferences, are ways of fighting back. Uh, so once again, shall this curator practice be actually curative as Wauja uh, wisely knows us, talks about that anyway. In advance, I'd like to say that I'm not an expert on Brazilian indigenous ethnology, although I'm very close and proposing to, to share this information here with you. I'm much more devoted to art worlds, uh, but the idea was to reflect uh, and to present a more Brazilian uh, gaze on, on all these situations. Uh, this idea of the anthropologist as creator emerged uh, or was more visible in this throughout this book by Roger Sanzini, published in 2020. Uh, and the idea was not to touch upon this enormous literature of museums and collections, but a more close relation to anthropologists' work at contemporary art world that is uh, very close to indigenous uh, art as well. Actually, uh, as uh, Aristoteles Barcelos shows us, uh, there is not, not such a, a, a mainstream circuit of Amazonian art, if we could create this sort of a label. Uh, at Brazil, the major pieces are more coming from Peru and, and, and other regions uh, than Brazilian specific uh, arena. But anyway, uh, this first sense that anthropology in connection with museums, uh, uh, as well as the, the relation anthropology has with travel, are historic, and then that might be a way of approaching and telling story, the history of anthropology. Ethnographic objects and images uh, and the formation of collections and classification procedures were vital to the 19th century anthropology. Museums could be text could be understood as laboratory where scientists could test their hypothesis on non-Western societies, although contaminated by those evolutionary, anthropometric, ethnocentric, and imperialistic principle. It is also well known that this forging and expansion of anthropological museums happened since the second half of 20th, uh, 19th century, sorry, together with the development of national museums and the specialization of branches of modern science. So in this taxonomical uh, high moment for Western knowledge and power, natural history museum, national museums, museums of art and anthropological museums held unambiguously specific objects and discourses from here and abroad. Things got a little bit mess, more messier today, right? Uh, anyway, human diversity for sure always intrigues um, populations and cultures, but anthropology as a social science discipline 
was consolidated only in this exact time. In this context of the second half of the 19th century, and the original scenes of this area of knowledge are widely known. We are somehow uh, token by imperialistic and colonial practices and dominated by evolutionist and ethnocentric perspective. So the knowledge provided by anthropology was fundamental for the consolidation of Western hegemonic power. It's not uh, anything to hide and it's considered sort of uh, original shame of anthropology. But in a different light, field research, observant participation, ethnography, and the, the forging of important concepts, among them culture, were fundamental elements through which anthropology was able to diminish the colonial effects or provide cultural relativistic insights that came to be seen as its main achievement to intellectual arena. Uh, so anthropology somehow dealt uh, specifically with West and the rest, and also somehow ma uh, managed to, 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 to balance universal principles and particular principles, uh, specifically by means of culture. Culture, that's something that might uh, unify human beings for one sense and diversify or specify, uh, exactly create or, or show or explain difference. So uh, this dialectical tension of both universalizing particularizing principles were and are still important to anthropology. Uh, and it's, they are seen for sure uh, in art world as well. Uh, so one side of this coin shows as Marshall, Gold, Marshall Goldman, the important anthropologist uh, from Museo Nacional, uh, in Brazil. For one side of this coin, there's an attempt to control and exclude difference. And to the other side, this Western way of thinking of other people's think, other people's uh, reason and other people's ways of seeing the world has always uh, valorized this difference, was always capable of at least try to learn something with it without suppressing it at all. So by attempting to capture this native point of view, the main task of anthropology maybe, uh, the ethos, their culture, their ways of classifications, institutions, meanings and behaviors, anthropological task was fundamental for amplifying the always narrow Western conception of humanity. So uh, anthropologists from all time and all over the world had shown how native conception regularly differ from hegemonic ones. We're talking about the ideas of space, time, labor, economy, power, state, family, gender, health, the body, the death, animals, objects, etc. They're absolutely not uh, uh, corresponding with uh, Western ways of understanding them. So um, the world came to be much more diverse and multiple than any Western inhabitants could ever imagine. And even uh, that uh, anthropologists before their commitment with field research and observant participation could even discover. Uh, anyway, there's also something to discuss how anthropologists think about levels as well as West and non-West, but is, this is also another path. Uh, in some way, therefore, other people's experience were always curated by anthropologists, both in this traditional sense of being edited, translated, reconfigured, selected by a specific viewpoint, and also by engaging with a specific lifestyle and, and, and the attempt of uh, bringing sense to all this. So during its short history, because we're talking about a discipline that uh, it's very, very young, 19th century, the second half of 19th century on, uh, although this uh, anthropology suffered diverse paradigm shifts from the evolutionary and imperialistic main, one of the main tools, passing through the omniscient traditional over scientific position, this idea of the scholar, and the, the anthropological authority uh, to a more subtle, dialogical, mediative, and connective action, avoiding to represent alterity. 
Although this debate may seem particularly uh, on the set today, this paradigm known as postmodern anthropology shifts happened at the end of 1980s, uh, especially around the Writing Culture Congress and based on what James Clifford and George Marcus uh, edited in a very important volume that's called exactly Writing Culture. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was published in 1986. So all this event criticized this authority of the anthropologies of the scholar and uh, put that to the four the narrative strategies, both poetic and politic. This is the subtitle of the book, Poetics and Politics of Anthropology, of ethnographic writing. So rhetoric strategies of description the effect of textual genders, the oscillations of past and present tenses, first and third persons, the raising of the context and dialogical situation brought all to a monological voice were some of the main critics posed by this paradigm. These issues are still vital to be thought today, important for this discussion, especially when we're talking about curatorship and uh, also because they spot authorship, narrative, and display issues. But they are no longer the main impulses for anthropological researches. Maybe the most widely known uh, and still recent groundbreaking conception is provided by anthropologists that might be coined as a Merindian perspectivism. That's pretty much what we have seen in the video. I'm not sure if you are familiar with Eduardo Viveiros de Castro publications and, and Descola, Philippe Descola publications as well, but that, that's, the main, that's the main argument. Uh, this, this idea that uh, uh, nature and culture are, are actually intricated and are not absolutely divided, are not absolutely uh, uh, it's not a dichotomy in this sense, right? So all these studies with South American indigenous groups and also elsewhere point to this different relation between humanity and animality, or even better, between culture and nature. This one uh, practices as we, as Western conception is formulated. This erodes such dichotomies as subject objects, body and reason and, and so forth. So in spite of being multicultural, as we believe to be, people are different because they do have other cultures all around the world, right? Indigenous groups from South America and elsewhere are multinatural. So they extend to other types of beings, the condition of subject. And, and they do universalize, not nature as we do, nature is something out there, but uh, the cultural point of view. So that's why apartheid uh, uh, and animals and even pens and even normal objects like flutes might have agency, might, ha might, might be posed on a subject for a point of view. So in this light, we are not seen as the evolved species, species as we uh, like to in, this, in our anthropocentric way of, of seeing world, but as one of the agents in the world interacting in a more equal way to other animal spirits, the dead and non-human and also non-human artifacts. So if notions, notions such as this, uh, humans, animals, objects might be under suspicion, according to Amerindian ontologists, what could one ever say about art? In a famous uh, text, Clifford Gertz stated correctly that there is a prolific production on the subject of art uh, and a sort of shared feeling, at least in the West, that art is something that this course can never reach. So this traffic among art and anthropology may be seen as one of the most impelling movements for the development of anthropological thought. Uh, from examples of primitiveness, sorry, from examples of primitiveness, the lack of technique, mental simplicity or underdevelopment prevalent at evolutionary paradigms up to the more actual exuberance and complexity of modes of thoughts and symbolic richness, artists' practices and crafts have always engaged anthropologists. 
for sure, there are a lot of difficulties, misunderstandings, and tensions during this this, this whole history. One interesting uh, reference is the key debates in anthropology quarrel about the universality of aesthetics. This was also a book or a series of discussion. One of, of them uh, is about the universality of aesthetic and it was organized and published by T. Ingold in 1993. And the debate was exactly uh, on, on that. There were February uh, authors on the, on the premise of a universality of aesthetics and contrary ones against this, this proposition. Uh, all participants, anthropologists, agree that uh, there is no universal, universally valid criteria as such, and that the premises for aesthetical judgments need to be culturally and historically situated. But some of them claim a sort of cross-cultural translation of some qualities, feelings, sensation, or even dispositions, while others believe that what Western society may classify as art is seen by people all over the world through completely different categories and processes. One of them were Alfred Gell, an important anthropologist that actually also uh, was vital for the arguing and, and researches on uh, of Aristoteles Barcelona to, to the uh, Wauja. So he is very skeptical and he proposes a, a, a very tense way of uh, reflect, reflecting a, a, over Western conception of art. So I, I'll quote Alfred Gell in a 1999 debate where he says, it's widely agreed that ethic and aesthetics belong in the same category. I would suggest that the study of aesthetics is to the domain of art as the study of theology is to the domain of religion. That is to say, aesthetics is a branch of moral discourse which depends on the acceptance of the initial articles of faith, that in the aesthetically valued object, there resides the principle of true and the good, and that the study of aesthetically valued objects constitutes a path toward transcendence. In so far as such modern souls possess a religion, that religion is the religion of art, the religion whose shrines consist on theaters, libraries, and art galleries, whose priests and bishops are the painters and poets, whose theologians are critics, and whose dogma is the dogma of universal aestheticism. Well, very provocative and very, very maybe even antipathetic, but that's the, the example for this premise of non-universalizing aspects of, of, of aesthetic. This is still somehow a quarrel because uh, Claude Lévi-Strauss, for instance, a very important anthropologist, a French anthropologist, discussed the myths and somehow proposed uh, uh, the structural conception of myths based on some criteria of universality. But anyway, this idea of, of erasing universal principles are, are, are important and were vital for, for Gell, specifically because he proposed, uh, as many of you might, might know, in an uh, acquero with, with Artur Danto, that objects could be subjects and objects of art could be seen as persons, actually. So the sort of predatory relation happened for centuries, uh, for sure, West and the rest, the, 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 the forming of, of, of artistic collections, ethnographic collections. Uh, and James Clifford has a, a fantastic article, it's called On Ethnographic Surrealism, where he analyzes this misunderstandings and also the scenario of the 1920 French avant-garde scenario onwards. Uh, so it's very well known, and, and, and anyway, the Surrealists uh, had some aftermath of the First World War and were absolutely anti-colonial. So uh, they claimed the revolution based on mentality. They aimed to transform themselves as much as transform the world and tended to see colonized people as natural allies. So there is a very interesting provocation also by Elsa Lagru, a, a Belgian uh, born anthropologist, but uh, a naturalized Brazilian one that also teaches at the uh, Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. 
uh, and she says about this surrealist context that this engine of such search for other words was the denial of consecrated art objects, craft and discourses in a need for escaping Western rational and objectifying representation modes. These artifacts that came from these words, these other words, signify the possibility of subjective experiences, illuminations more than elucidation, as Breton would say. Ethnic artifacts were propulsors for a gaze revolution. According to this author, Wati Demont, the real program of surrealists was to create a new relation with images, images that did not refer to any outside world, but to one inside world impelled to manifest itself. In such a task, the objects sauvage were not alone. They belonged to a broader universe of a kind of objects, such as objects trouvés, the, natural, the bizarre natural objects, objets démodés, the out of faction artifacts, ready-mades, as one made by Duchamp, and also objects surrealistes, the species of three-dimensional college, as we know all kinds of surprising objects that could be found at any place, but especially at Marché Opus in Paris. Such apparently occasional encounter with the object of those sort could produce a free association process to reveal unpredicted aesthetics proposals or solutions to obstructed creative processes. And I am quoting here. So uh, it's basically this idea of, of, of of sharing some principles by intellectuals, artists, and also institutions, the, the, the forging of, of institution, the Institute of Ethnography in France was happening at the same time. And this is a very well-known uh, connection. Uh, one of the most famous one were also uh, uh, Picasso's borrowing from, from African masks, from Trocadero Museum and other in other situations that are documented both by Lagrou, but especially by, by James Clifford. So although the surrealists didn't manifest much interest in this contextualized and relativized analysis, such as anthropologists will do, they had exposed side by side ethnic art and masterpieces to erode this worshiping of canonical Western art. Such interest on contextualizing and situating specific artifacts and pieces would be common today in this traffic among curatorial practices and anthropology. So we know uh, specifically there are three uh, famous uh, expositions, as we know, uh, uh, in this arena, uh, primitivism in the 20th century art, the affinity of the modern and tribal held in New York in MoMA in 1984, curated by William Rubin. Art and Artifact in Buffalo Museum of Science, 1989, curated by Susan Vogel. This is exactly the, the case where uh, Alfred Gell and Atu Danto argued about uh, uh, a Zandi uh, uh, hunting net. And Magician de la Terre in Centre Georges Pompidou in Paris in 1989, curated by Jean Hubert Martin. Uh, well, anyway, so this this discussion also emerged in in a more close uh, um, uh, tension on on art and anthropology when uh, uh, Hal Foster published this article that might be also known by you that is the artist as an as ethnographer. So uh, he proposed, interestingly, uh, this, this sort of double envy process that is still, I think it's still uh, interesting for us to, to highlight because for, in his sense, in his perspective, uh, artists could conceive anthropology as the science of alterity. Uh, and in this regard, uh, it's absolutely important for, for reading the, the diverse artistic practice. And then also the discipline would take culture as its object and its expanded field of reference that postmodernism and art criticism have long sought to make their own. Uh, third, ethnography is fundamental, considered contextual, considered the root demand for which contemporary artists share with many other practitioners today 
So we, we know that uh, a lot of artists and, 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 and curators do uh, very close uh, activity uh, as an ethnographic one or observant participation one. And fourth, anthropology would be, uh, would be seen as able to arbitrate the interdisciplinary, another road value in contemporary art theory. Uh, this fifth element, element of ENSI would be the self-critique of anthropology, based mainly on this, this trying of, of erosion of, of specific concepts. Uh, that also brings this romanticism on the margins. And then uh, how Foster questions also some of the specific practices from one side, they might be absolutely vital. They might be absolutely uh, important, positive, and uh, they might uh, bring to the to the fore, uh, oops, bring to the fore uh, context, uh, cosmologies, objects, perspectives never seen before. But from their sides, depending on the way of dealing with each uh, ex exhibition, with each creating process, that might be a sort of a reification of of this primitivist fantasy that he, as he asserts, that is this direct one action where the, the other, the, the ethnic other would have free access to the unconscious, to, uh, to a more natural perspective, which is sometimes uh, uh, very, very dangerous. So, um, Pedro Cesarino is another important anthropology, and he discusses something very, very close to this, uh, to this ex exposition. He is very aware of this exposition, have publishings on that. And um, anyway, he considered that despite the originality and potential actuality, much of this appropriation of non-Western references held by modern artists lead to the establishing of formal analogies and to the creation of formal individual or national mythologies that to one effective study of intellectual and static alien horizons, modern appropriations and inventions of the other and of his object, their objects were not exactly oriented to disarm the referred dichotomies, even though they try to bring positive status to the primitive in their static and wills of transgressions. Um, so uh, maybe there, there are some, some positive uh, conceptions on that, uh, novel ideas on that. But I think we might uh, shift to, to the other video that I would like to, to present a film uh, as well. That is this process made by uh, Aristoteles Barcelos Neto when he brought some of this uh, Wauja uh, art, art at, uh, to France. So uh, Aristotle, just before doing, uh, finishing his, his doctor degree, uh, Marcelus Nato uh, contacted Musée du Quai in, in in Paris and dealt with, with the possibility of doing this very giant ritual uh, performance that is called Apartai. And actually, Musée du Quai alone couldn't afford all those proxies. Actually, they wanted to be a performance and not to be an installation, not to be a collection. So they dealt a little bit and they discussed a little bit. Indigenous group didn't want uh, to, to be just a performance. That's not, not uh, only possible because there are a lot of uh, infrastructural discussions and, 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 and procedures that must be respected. So uh, according to another uh, connections with Radio France, they actually brought uh, uh, this, this, all this to, the, to, to France, to Montpellier in a park. So, uh, and, and all this was documented by the author as well. So this is the video uh, that I would like that I'm, 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 I'm showing some, some bits, some part here uh, for us to discuss because I think it's more closely even related to the, 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 the universe that we might 
uh, approach on, on criticizing or not uh, Western conception. So uh, are you seeing already the, the, the image, right? <laughs> Nossa viagem foi muito longa de chegar aqui no Montpellier, porque fizemos várias viagens para pegar transporte, né, para chegar aqui. Então, saindo da I will skip a little bit this, so he's showing the, the, the village and he will discuss how uh, long was the, the journey because it took weeks from them to, to, to come from the, the, the village up to, Paris, up to Paris and then to Montpellier. I think to bring these So the masks are brought. <laughs> They are in the center. That's an important part of the film where they depict the uh, And they say exactly apartheid. And the Michael apartheid. No, 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 Eu comprei na velho, velho castelo. This old castle would be full of apartheid. So that's the place where they perform. They create a little house. And they rehearsed a lot. I want to buy one. Just what like to show a little bit of the big mask. So, you might see uh, that making the room and they are so handsome that the video is and they go up to the night public how to see. Apartheid are all around, and uh, everything that might be put in this position of subject, uh, and even uh, despite of 
human agency or not, because everything has agency. Okay, so uh, uh, I think the important point to underline here is that is, this is not a representation of the ancient times. This is actually a way of acting on uh, the real context of life and bringing, fighting this apartheid and really how the we have uh, traditions, descriptions, things that are always uh, uh, be seen and all for the human and the impact of the very terrific, the terrible uh, outcome. But here is something a little bit strange because of the or white people, or French people, but for sure they are interacting with a lot of people here, mediated uh, by uh, Aristoteles Barcelona. So he uh, actually uh, helped translate and, and fight for the what we have expected to be accomplished. So I think that's that's an important thing to to do. They they were always on science, they were somehow co-curative of all this, this process. And this was even earlier than, um, than, than what, what is now starting to become a co-curative process in Brazil. So we have Elena Goldstein uh, presents a lot of, of examples of, of, of processes of curating and researching on, on collections that nowadays absolutely involve indigenous representatives. Uh, and this, this is starting to happen actually in the 21st century in Brazil at all, because uh, it was not common for sure. So uh, trying to, uh, uh, let me bring it here, the, this, this idea, this Final idea. So the point made by Cesarino, and somehow uh, I think that this video in this context of Aristoteles Barcelona to and Wauja indigenous brings is that uh, the idea here would be to somehow uh, uh, dismantle it a, a little bit uh, Western conceptions, and that's not quite easy to do, right? So. Uh, thinking about that, uh, I have, I was wondering if, if, uh, if, what, what would be the, the, the perspective from, from, from the public uh, in France, actually? So, uh, what are the outcomes of these performances? The, did the French public minimally, French Brazilian, right? Because also it was the, the, the year of Brazil in France. Were they minimally instructed about the, the events? Does they watch the, the, the performance with some sort of condescendence, refine the primitivist fantasy? Does the performance made audience reflect upon the borders of theater, ritual, and the health of subject and object, and even uh, on this, this relation of human and non-human that are vital for the, the correct understanding of what, what is the, the, the performance for them. Uh, what does the museum institution learned and altered in its procedures by this, this event? Who were the main spectators of such performance? Were French or Brazilian people and authorities? So uh, at the end, the, those Wauja masks were sold and became part of the French Museum through tense relation mediated by Barcelos Net uh, that always, as I told you, guaranteed that the decision was to be made by Wauja Indians themselves. So um, one important thing is that we're, they were somehow angry with the institution and they didn't remove the eyes and the, mo and the mouth um, making such a, a mask the most dangerous ones, because normally when they sell something for, for curators, they do somehow diminish their, their, their potency, their, 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 their illness potency. So um, 
anyway, Barcelo's natural actions and mediation were absolutely vital since the beginning because uh, he were uh, trained firstly as a, a visual artist, then a museologist, and then he took masters and doctor degrees in anthropology. And from his, from the starting point of his his research, he made uh, collections with Wauja indigenous groups. He even collected drawings. Uh, and and the point I think is that exactly because of being able to collect and because of being able to 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 form uh, uh, collections to to manage and to 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 interact with his specific institutions, he was he's got this specific position for uh, uh, for those indigenous groups and were able to read all this uh, with a more dense uh, uh, possibility. Um, so, as one anthropologist, he could only acquire this knowledge and status among Wauja collaboration of museums and funding institutions. As a trained anthropologist, he was able to read some deeply meanings of the whole situation. But as a connoisseur in artworks, he was also aware of exposition vicissitudes and aftermaths. So uh, I would like to, to end here with the, the question made by Cesarino. Does such performance and collection was able to dismantle a, a bit of our Western perspective on art? Our homogenic gaze still unifies all this into the salvage slot. For one sense, they were all abroad. They were all in an in a absolutely diverse area, arena. It was not the white cub. Uh, um, but we are also lacking the, the possible mediation processes uh, and also lacking the, the possible feedbacks from, from the public that were still in a sort of a passive uh, position in, in during all this. Anyway, the masks were around, uh, the ritual was done, and I hope the, the apartheid uh, could still somehow be, be, be dominated for the biggest cure of, of Brazilians, French, and why not Austrian people as well. I think uh, that will be it so far. And, I'll, and anyway, I'll be glad to open a, a sort of a more uh, direct conversation. I'm able to, to, to listen to some critics and to, to, to I don't know, some, some questions of, of more sharply and directly. Uh, dialogic uh, conversation if if you feel so thank you very much thank and you Kawe. thank you for this rich overview first the rich introduction into seminal text of anthropology because yeah, nobody of us is a trained anthropologist uh, but of course um, we have some knowledge even some superficial knowledge about this, um, many of the authors that you cited. Uh, but uh, I would, um, but basically your paper, uh, I mean, you, you put up like the basic question that we deal here with the whole lecture series. So how to interact with the other. Uh, with this very lively uh, example from Brazil. And yeah, I would now invite students to make questions, uh, any kind of questions, because in the chat, we had also some problems with the audio sometimes. So maybe you are also very highly invited to make just questions about understanding or whatever you feel. Like. Sorry, sorry. I'm just seeing now the, the, the chat. But anyway, we're we're yeah. able to come back if if one need to. Um, sir, thank you for your presentation. Uh, uh, as a French guy, I've got a question about um what do you think about the French ethnologist Philippe Descola and his works about nature and culture and the debates uh, between the, these two topics? 
great, and hey, merci bien. <laughs> Uh, I'm not a, a, an expert on, on ethnology, but uh, for sure, Philippe Descola is a, is a, was absolutely influent also for uh, this perspective is animist, uh, uh, naturalist conceptions. Uh, uh, and I think uh, they are somehow very close because the basic assumption on, on, on trying to, to integrate differently this idea that that uh, nature and culture are are absolutely a divide uh, was fundamental for as well i think bruno latour philippe discola and vitor de castro and other authors that are dealing with that uh, help us to understand uh, quite better the diversity of 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 those, of those people actually, and of, of how can we even think about different ontologies or how can we even uh, reflect different about, uh, about ourselves. And this was very radical because uh, uh, anthropology itself was absolutely fundamental for this, this proposal that's quite dominant all over, all over the world of the, this multiculturalism. Right? So somehow we are all one, we are, our species, we are somehow seen as, as the elected species because of moral, because of language, because of religion, because of, uh, I don't know, because of the thumbs or whatever we could select to, to somehow uh, detach ourselves from the world, right? And all these anthropologists are absolutely fundamental and not, not them, but the, the work done by them with indigenous people that somehow are not seen as, as agents in this, this process are very interesting exactly because they, they question ourselves on, on that. So they, they show how uh, in a very, I'm quoting by head here, Fergie Castro famous article, how, uh, uh, how less human we are when we divide nature and culture in this way. When we uh, spare, uh, make this this, this 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 sharp divide among uh, subjects and objects, uh, and among human and animals and environment and spirits in in ways that uh, would wouldn't be absolutely thinkable from them. Uh, so I think that's a a, a fantastic. Um, challenge for even for curatorship because uh, uh, the drawings uh, show something that can be also an object and that can that is also an animal and that that is also enacted in specific ways in ritual performances so the big point uh, and that's something maybe I'm not that expert to, to, to explain to you exactly what is the, the, the tension point among the Philippe Descola and uh, Viver de Castro and, and Barcelo Neto on that. But the point is that, uh, as, as Barcelo Neto states, the transformation is the biggest, uh, is the biggest uh, uh, recurrent uh, argument on uh, Amazonian art. In, a, in general, so exactly this flux of of entities, uh, because the the conception is is based as Virgil Castro pose it. Uh, every single being sees the world as we do, as we human do. What changes is the body, but the point is that the the, the uh, when the the we're talking with other others kinds of body, we are talking about the discussion of production. So if I'm interacting with, I don't know, a chicken, chicken might see me as a sort of a jaguar, as a, not as a human being. And if I'm seeing a spirit, I probably see it uh, also as a jaguar. Uh, so uh, this idea that, that there's something uh, unifying uh, the living beings, despite the form or the body they are, is absolutely vital. And that's, that's tricky for us because we are not used to, to, to able or to consider that objects might have agency that 
that that the shape of things could shift from a drawing to a pen to uh, I don't know a, a flute uh, and to a specific agency made by mask. So they knew, know that they are somehow engaging with that. So they are creating the performance. They are creating the masks and they are singing the the, the songs and they are feeding them the 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 mask. Uh, they're taking care of them, so they're controlling the spirits, etc. Uh, and that is not seen as a representation fact. That's not seen as somehow a, a theater in this, in this false conception of non-reality. You know? So that's absolutely tricky. And I'm not sure that, that this sort of discussion would be um, clear for, for the people in one sense. Uh, so I think this 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 whole um, this whole performance is absolutely interesting because of a lot of things. For sure, they they was they were you know, part, partially respectful. For sure, uh, they were uh, thrilled by the performance. For sure, the 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 visual the, the form of all this were absolutely catching. Um, uh, as well, it is a performance that will lead people out of the White Cup. That's also something interesting. So it, in a sense, expanded the principles of classification. And in a sense, they, they touch upon this, this, this criticism of our own statics. But uh, the point is that only when uh, maybe a more uh, compromise mediation happens. Uh, maybe I believe that the public would be able to uh, to put their own framework of, of reading the, and understanding things uh, in, in check. You know, uh, so I think that's something that maybe was not Marcelo's that was not able to do. Exactly, but by doing the, the documentary and by publishing a lot of articles and, and materials on, on all this collection, he ended up doing this, but not for, from them, from the ones on, on that specific moment at Montpellier. My point of view. <laughs> Thank you. Do we have any more questions? Maybe I can jump in quickly to the moment when, when those questions about the audio uh, came up in the chat. Uh, because I think it, it was uh, when you when you described a bit more in detail how the how this performance was conceived and and how it uh, actually happened. Uh, so I wanted to maybe you can wrap up uh, in in short uh, what was the framework in which the, the this was presented, and um, and then following up this, I was also wondering uh, whether there is really no trace of any reaction by the French uh, audience. Like, is, is there uh, uh, nothing about how this performance was received? Because um, this other perspective um, would also be interesting to me how, how it was uh, yeah, received and picked up by the audience. Yeah, that's, that's what's what I expected to do by watching some of of Aristotle's uh, classes that were recorded and I'm reading some of some interviews that are that helped me to uh, bring some some information on, on the the performance, uh, but I couldn't find any any uh, registering of this feedback from the specific public over there. You know, uh, I'm I'm pretty sure that as conceived in this specific year of of Brazil and France. Uh, it were basically, I, I do believe, uh, connoisseurs and also uh, uh, Brazilian connected people that form this, this this audience. So to to Montpellier, so that that is a already non-incidental 
public, you know, so this is already a bias, right? So some, some, some of them uh, may have um, more knowledge on, on what's going on than, than a general public at all. But that happens all the time with any institution and any museum for sure. Pierre Bourdieu is around to remind us that, <laughs> right? But anyway, so, uh, uh, he, he before publishing his just before publishing his his, his, his defending his, his thesis, he came up with with the uh, uh, Musée du Quai Branly uh, to try to recreate these big uh, ritual masks because that was an initiative that had already happened uh, by the, those indigenous groups specifically. So they uh, started in 1997, eight, and in two, 2000. So they had already attempted three times to do this giant ritual of masks of, of specific apartheid. And they, there are a lot of apartheid over there. There, there was a, a fish one, and there were uh, uh, also snakes enacted in those masks that you, you saw. Uh, but there are a lot of different possible entities that uh, are fed, they, so they are always dealing with them and during the during life, during during their own biography. So these rituals are midlife rituals, are, are just distinguished by by the, the initiatory rituals and the the, the mortuary rituals. So the others are are happening uh, in during our life period exactly because of of health issues. In the same video that is over there, Apartheid, the, the, the ones that uh, the shaman explains, and holds a camera and explains a little bit of what's going on, they, they, they say that Apartheid are just like vaccines because they, in the ritual, keep making people strong. And those masks are meant to be somehow destroyed or at least their agency needs to be cooled down, and that takes a decade, you know. So while uh, constructing them, they are also feeding them. So masks are, are, are important and are, are valued because they ate too much, because they are expensive, and because they were created. So there is a feeding and a construction of the mask and also a cool down on all these masks. Uh, there was a lot of there was a, a sort of a conflict because the uh, the museum Musée du Quai didn't want to to receive uh, a collection. They wanted just to do this performance, and they wanted the mass to be burned just after the the performance. For sure, the indigenous didn't want uh, that to happen because they are also uh, know the potentiality of the selling of their their art crafts. And how important is that uh, uh, in economic uh, aspects, but also for white people to to understand a little bit of their cultures? They are they're displaying also the ways of, of of being, and they are somehow teaching also the whites how to how to do it. So uh, there was a, a big tension about that, and after probably mediations. Uh, uh, of, of Barcelos Neto, they agreed of forming this collection, especially because they, they understood that those masks was absolutely rare. Actually, there's no such a mask in any Brazilian museum. That's another interesting thing to, to say, uh, because, uh, well, those, those collections need to be cared uh, uh, they are expensive to, 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 to care. Also, um, they have uh, other other difficulties as well. So, anyway, in all this process, uh, Barcelo Neto succeeded in, in creating this 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 ritual, and they uh, find Montpellier in, in that park a, a nice place for the for the exhibition. But this meant this had a, a lot of of economical and technical uh, uh, troubles to, to, to be solved. They needed to, to build the house. They need to, to create and to, to form the mask. They rehearsed before. Um, and then they displayed for, for those audience that is, is lacking. This information is still lacking. When, how does the public was 
recruited, what was the mediator presented to, to the public, and even the assessment of, uh, of the, the, the performance uh, is, is badly documented. The, the, the film ends with uh, an interviewer questioning the, the shaman what they took from all this, and they say they, they are very happy to show the, 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 the ritual in the right way for whites, for Brazilians, and also for French. Um, so this is not the whole picture, right? So <laughs> they know that they are engaging with others. They know that they are uh, also uh, uh, being active and, and capturing somehow other webs of institutions and of subjects. Uh, and they are also politically clever in, in, in this sense. Um, so I think basically that maybe I have told uh, also that the masks are not the, the biggest, uh, the biggest and more most important instrument. There is a flute, a flute and a clarinet. They are absolutely taboo for a woman. Women can't see them at all. Uh, they're ter terrible uh, uh, problems if any woman sees them. Uh, uh, the fruits, but they were displayed over that because it was for white people, for foreigners, and not for Wauja women. Uh, women. Uh, and there are also other instruments around. So there's a drum, a giant drum, there are campaign, those, 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 those crafts. So we do have the complex of flutes, the drums, there are the singing and the dancing that go together in important ways, and also the masks that uh, presentifies, maybe not represent, but presentifies those such uh, apartheid. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Um, I find it uh, um, very interesting how careful you present this um, this example, because you you are you are most prolific and uh, and giving already the pro and contra that we discussed a lot here. Um, how how to uh, engage with different cultures to question something the possibilities of uh, exhibiting something like local and global uh, divides and of course with this uh, anthropological question, uh, it goes even deeper into this thorny uh, issues. And what I liked now about your discussion was that you showed a way to do it. So to bring them here to Europe as a group and then let them perform the whole ritual and so forth. And, uh, and you already mentioned that um, it still remains difficult, even if you don't bring only the objects, uh, like, uh, like the most museums uh, in, in the Western world um, did. Uh, uh, so to bring all the group, but there still remains something that you, I think, already worked about. You sent me also the text about this um, uh, kind of issues between ritual and performance and theater. Because in a way it ended up what we saw was the French uh, audience uh, sitting there uh, very nicely in this beautiful uh, park slope and mm -hmm. it came to my mind that then is it is like a kind of theater or something like again you know like folklore uh, exposed but on the other hand you showed you gave some hints how to deal with this aspect so to give more information, to do the interviews with them and uh, to give documentation and uh, scientific um, work together. I mean, this could be like a tiny step or something in between maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfectly. I do I believe so as well. Um, and I think maybe uh, there's something 
exactly as these discussions on the object that are not only objectified by shape and mm -hmm. by, I don't know, the readings of the object that we might uh, semiotically maybe um, catch, the performance also is something that might be uh, broadened somehow because in a sense they were, yeah, watching a piece, right? But in another sense, no, because they were, there was no theater. They were in a, in a performance condition in the sense that it took hours and hours and hours under the sun <laughs> and that there was no sort of, of absolutely, uh, um, uh, how do we say this, this, this realistic conception of, of the, the, the Italian stage, you know, yeah. there was no illusion maybe mm -hmm. in the same sense. And the point for me that, that somehow struck me a bit was that uh, I think the, 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 the general uh, reading and reception of the, of the performance was something that they are enacting my mythologies. You know, mm -hmm. and I think that would be the point. I think that uh, if we would, I wouldn't be able, <laughs> maybe even Aristoteles would be able to redo it because uh, it's interesting because uh, this thing happened only be only due to a specific collaboration among institution, govern Brazilian government, uh, French government, uh, Musée du Quai and other political instances. So this is not free from all this web of institutional collaboration and politics. Mm -hmm. uh, but if one could redo this in a curatorship more, 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 collect, more close to what maybe all this discussion could lead us, I think that would be important to, to try to somehow uh, uh, avoid this idea of representing mythology. Because mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. I think the biggest, uh, tricky situation for, for, for uh, um, maybe changing or impacting our, our perception modes for, for theater, for performance would be that uh, uh, they know they are actually carrying those masks and that the, those masks, those masks were made by them, you know, but that does absolutely matter because but they are all around among objects, among living beings, among, you know, so they are all, all around, but they're not only, uh, only shamans are able to see them in specific situation, actually, mm -hmm. when, they, when they smoke, when uh, the, the, the tobacco, or in the, in the in other case, when they, they have the, the hallucinations caused by other, other uh, dispositives. And then they see the images, and then they understand what's really going on on the on the, on the situation. You know? So that's quite interesting uh, because somehow we can uh, reflect a little bit about what does representation means even for us. And we are not that close. Not, not sorry, we're not that far away from this discussion on on theater, right? Because maybe drama in the sense of representation is very far away from what theater, contemporary theater is staging nowadays. So mm -hmm. there are actors doing something just like in performance. So uh, there might be some interesting connections with uh -huh, that. Uh -huh. Interesting. Uh, yeah. uh -huh. That, I don't know, that might bring us to, uh, to somehow this deconstruct uh, our categories. Wow, interesting. I, I, I had to think uh, because I just touched this in another course recently that uh, also in European theater we still see the dramas of Aeschylus, for example, and they go back to 500 before Christ uh, and they are still on stage, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. interesting. Interesting, interesting. And also, uh, I think that there's something on the, the person of the curator mm -hmm. that another chapter to, to be discussed maybe, because for sure we know that there's a social construction of a personal, uh, social construction of an artist and also the social construction of a curator, right? 
And actually, uh, it's obvious that Aristotle is, just was able to do this because of his work of, I don't know, decades with them as anthropologists and as anthropologists that collects. Mm -hmm. So the negotiations and the payments and the taxes and the, and the respect that is due, that is, uh, that, that is uh, constructed by means of this, this, this traffic uh, were absolutely done by few people from Aristotle, Acacio Piedade in the, in the case of, of music, uh, Marie Inés and others, I don't know, maybe a few, 10 anthropologists at all from, from, from this, this group. Mm -hmm. And that shed some light also on the, on the personae of the creator as well, because um, there is also this, this status that is constructed by means of his action on the artwork uh, scenario and, and relating to specific institutions and specific artists as well. So uh, those economical, institutional and political instances are not that different in this sense, uh, but that there is also a difference. You know, when we see something like this, we are astonished by Wauja and by Apartheid, and not by ourselves that. Yeah. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> and, and it's also true, but I think it's a also messenger, a, 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 a crucial point um, that you uh, remind us of all this work that was done before and afterwards. So all this institutional framework and networking and uh, political and economic uh, interaction to bring this group to Europe. And this is uh, highly intense. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, it, it, I had to think about this, um, how much work is needed to only come near to a position that's really interesting and uh, has this ethical approach, mm -hmm. but it's humongous just for this, uh, just uh, for this one performance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I, yeah. I, I sometimes think we are really very far away from any globalized art, really, in a way, you know? <laughs> <Yes>. because <laughs> because so difficult to really do it properly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. There are all this involved, and there's also uh, uh, tensions, big tensions. Uh, according to that, according to institutions, according to what sort of agency can the, uh, I don't know, curators, anthropologists and institutions, directors at all, who have on, 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 on such processes as this, you know, sometimes indigenous groups and people might uh, need or want something properly and this is very hard to achieve, or sometimes there are even danger uh, according to what sort of collection are we talking about, etc. I recalled uh, being in another museum, ethnological museum, uh, Emilio Gueldi in Pará, here, in the north area of, of, of Brazil. And there was a very interesting picture over there. There's this, this indigenous guy, clearly indigenous guy, uh, manipulating maybe i'm not sure if it was a pottery or something uh, a nest or something i really don't know what was I don't recall the piece but he was wearing gloves surgical gloves and there was a little keynote over there saying well there he's using those those gloves because of cosmological danger not because of the care that we do they find an object you know, he's using that because though such an object needed to be destroyed with his owner. So as he was curated and as it was collected, uh, it, it, it carried with them, it carried with, with its sort of cosmological danger. So that's quite interesting, the appropriation of surgical gloves by indigenous groups, exactly because of uh, ontological and cosmological perspective. So 
this is very tricky. <laughs> yeah, we love that. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any further questions or ideas that you would like to share? Anyway, we can keep in touch as well. Uh, I will type my my mail here. If you so, yeah. Everyone, I wrote only to to Judo that had written me before. Warning so, about. Uh, now we have it. Thank you very much. This is your contact. But uh, we are also working very hard <laughs> um, on the staff mobility of Karl Kruger. So uh, I invited him to come over to Europe uh, for our next summer term that's already starting in March. Uh, so it's uh, really just a short amount of time. And he's going to teach a course about contemporary Brazilian art and hopefully also a little bit of anthropology for dummies, yeah? <laughs> Not at all. We have seen how, how things are closed in the sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, super interesting. But um, yeah, I think he is going to teach, but I will accompany this course. Uh, he's going to teach in English first via Zoom, and then hopefully uh, he manages to come to Linz in May. So we are working on that. And we have also to face institutional um, uh, uh, queries and no, institutional uh, procedures. Uh, and also, of course, the pandemic situation is um, also kind of complicating everything. But hopefully, I'm, I'm really positive uh, about the idea that you managed to come to Linz and that we can uh, yeah, have a follow-up discussion and uh, of these issues and that we can show you around our tiny university and yeah, have a good time together. It's your honor and it would be a pleasure for me, for sure. I promise not to bring any ethnographic object, <laughs> but I hopefully I intend to carry some of our Thai and some knowledge of how to 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 make up our Thai cure us all from this this disease maybe more yeah, than maybe <laughs> maybe everything can help I think why not right <laughs> thank you so much for your audience and for your time you're very welcome patience for all this uh, I'm looking very forward to keep in touch with you and uh, being there at May. Thank you. So we keep in touch anyway. And we, with the course, we meet again. And for the last time next week in presence, please. But we will remind you of that via May. So thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ciao. Ciao, ciao.